Bro, check it out. Eight different super grandmasters are all gonna work together on one team to play chess against the artificial intelligence software called Stockfish. This should be a close battle. Let's see how it goes. I win! The number one super grandmaster chess player, Magnus Carlsen. Look at this guy work, man. Probably one of the smartest brains in the whole planet. It's the type of position where you can just close your eyes for a minute or two. This is kind of the attack where you can just close your eyes for a moment or two. You know, just to process how you're gonna destroy your competitor. No, I, I think he's recall. He must be recalling some variation. No, 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 no. He must be recalling some kind of uh, variation. Look at the breathing. Oh my God, look at the breathing. The breathing. That's sleep breathing. But can you sleep with your hand rested like that? Let me try. The greatest chess player alive today, but not the greatest chess player, period. The evolution of chess playing machines has been fascinating because it's both fun to see people push to their limits and because the game is a mirror into what's possible with technology. But now it's clear that human intelligence just isn't able to keep up with cutting edge machine intelligence because chess now has two branches of competition. And the second branch is artificial intelligent powered machines. We call them chess engines. And they also have a branch where they compete for their top spot. So I wanna make sure that you personally are not blindsided by artificial intelligence because it's going to come into your life in a lot of forms very rapidly, very quickly, and very unexpectedly. So in this video, I wanna look at the history of artificial intelligence and the way it's been applied to chess because that will give us a window into how this technology emerges, how it iterates, and how over time it changes the way our society functions. So at the filming of this video, there are already dozens of different chess engines out on the internet that you can play with and they will all perform far better than the best human player on the planet. And directly from this fact, there is new drama that has emerged in the chess community that is upending the reliability and trustworthiness of having two humans sit together and play in person. So after winning 50 games in a row, the world's best chess champion, Magnus Carlsen, recently experienced an unsettling loss against a much lower ranked player named Hans Niemann. And honestly, the nature of the loss does feel a little bit sus to me. You sussy baka. Because the way Hans Niemann won, at least from what I'm reading, seems to mimic the way that a lot of the chess AIs work. So I'm definitely not a chess master myself, but it seems like the way the AI systems tend to beat the best players in the world is by grinding out long games. And that's exactly the way that Hans won this one against the world's best chess player. And there's no shortage of ways that Hans could have cheated. In fact, there's forums on forums devoted to how you could cheat at chess and ways that they should check to prevent this in the future. And honestly, I'm just gonna presume he's innocent for now because I don't have enough evidence to say otherwise. However, I can tell you this is not a problem that's gonna go away. It will get worse. 100% positive about that. And it's gonna get harder and harder because whether it's job applications, coding challenges, or just straight up homework, it's gonna become harder and harder to separate the regular humans from the augmented humans. And speaking of non-augmented classic humans, this video is sponsored by my diminishing bank account. So to make this channel happen, I am basically jobless and I am spending my own money working on this and I love it and I hope it works. But if you guys want to support me by hitting that subscribe button or a comment below, that would be super cool. Better than a sponsor at this point. And now, back to the video. All right, let's talk about the history of chess AI. The basics, they're 64 squares, they're eight by eight in a grid, and millions of people around the world play this game, which originally came from India and is based off a game called Chaturunga. But things started to change almost 40 years later, when in 1989, the best chess player in the world at the time, Garry Kasparov, beat Deep Thought. And then for almost the next decade, they went back and forth, but eventually by 1996, IBM's computer Deep Blue was able to beat the world's best grandmaster at the time, 
Gary Kasparov. Now I wanna share with you this fascinating video I found on YouTube from Martin Chess. So he took the publicly available data about how the chess engines work compared to human ELO ratings and put them over time in this fascinating graphic. Okay, so starting around 2000, you can see that Deep Blue is still in the lead. It is the best chess playing machine of the era. Now it is not using what I would call artificial intelligence. It was not trained and learned how to play. It was programmed in. When things start to change, when AI kind of goes through its renaissance around 2010 to 2015, you start getting machines that were trained and learned. Okay, so right here around 2017, you see Alpha Zero show up. Alpha Zero is from DeepMind. It's a subset of Google slash Alphabet, and they are using machine learning. This is a system that had actually learned from experience how to play chess. And from the work that led up to that moment and from then on, it's never been the same. The best chess playing engines are now based on deep learning, their neural networks, they use artificial intelligence, they simulate games against each other and get better and better. The tools are now just very different and they're based in artificial intelligence. Now in 2017, Stockfish, which was the best chess playing system around at the time, was beaten 28 games to zero by Alpha Zero. And that marked a big turning point. So to put some perspective on what you just saw, the best player in the world right now, Magnus Carlsen, who we talked about in that uh, chess drama earlier, he is ranked at 2,864 for his ELO rating. A lot of those chess machines that we were watching were well above 3,500. In the chess world, when you're talking about a standard deviation, that is a big, big, big skill difference. So cool little fact, in 1951, Alan Turing actually played the first game against a computer. Now it was done on paper because it wasn't kind of like it is now, but still it's cool that he's gonna go down in history with that first computer versus human game. And in the following years, a lot of people built upon this work to develop new chess game engines. But up until Alpha Zero, it really was complex logic machines, it was hand-coded rules, and it was a whole bunch of heuristics that real humans thought about and coded into the system. So Garry Kasparov in the 1980s said that computers would never be as good as the top grandmasters. Obviously a quote he probably regrets, but at the time, it wasn't crazy to think that way. I mean, his predictions were accurate for a number of years, and there was plenty of reason to doubt at that point in time. Also, he himself had defeated IBM's Deep Blue on multiple occasions. And even after the first loss to Deep Blue, he still was kind of like, might've got lucky. But by the end of that year, he had played it enough times that he basically threw in the hat and said, yeah, it's better than me. And remember, we've had 30 years since that point to improve the way computation works, to make huge strides in the fundamental understanding of how artificial intelligence works, and collecting much more robust data sets. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to determine which chess engine is actually the best because part of what's happening is that some of the data sets are being shared, some of the ways the systems are encoded are shared. This is the kind of thing that you can find on GitHub where it has an iterative day by day change depending on what developers are doing. So there's so much cross between the two, it's almost hard to distinguish them. But just to make things simple, I'll go there. A good example of this is Alpha Zero, which uses neural networks and deep learning to perform its search. But if you try to compare something like Lia Chess Zero to Alpha Zero, it's not really a fair comparison because Lia Chess Zero takes an open source version of Alpha Zero and puts it into its system under the hood. Which means that both systems, when they actually play games and they do what's called reinforcement learning, where they play against each other and they learn from one another, they help each other. They share a code base in that sense. So having them play against each other makes them both better. So putting them head to head is a weird concept. Although I suppose if two grandmasters play each other and they study each other, it's kind of similar. But yeah, there's just a symbiotic relationship there I wanted to point out. So in the present day, these chess engines have all developed to the point where they could always beat the best chess players 100% of the time. So as a matter of fact, out of 100 games played against the best modern chess engine, the world champion couldn't win even one of them. 
he lost all 100 games. So Stockfish 9 is a top rated chess engine with a rating of 3,438. Now this rating is not exactly an official form, so you can't call it a FID score or you can't call it an ELO score, but rather it's from the engine's own rating system. But generally, scientists agree that if you put Stockfish 9 up against a human player, it would probably have an even higher ELO rating. So we don't even have quite the apples to apples rating system that we used to anymore because they're just playing in a pool of highly intelligent artificial intelligent robots, but we're just playing against other humans that don't have all those digital advantages. And even before this cheating scandal, how has artificial intelligence already been changing the chess community? So the majority of grandmasters do analyze both their games and the games of their top opponents using artificial intelligence software to help them learn. This is because it's not cheating, it's just a different source to learn from, and all of the top players are doing it, and if you don't, you're just not gonna be able to keep up. But one of the consequences of this is that modern day chess players can't really be compared in the same way to the chess players from, say, the 1980s or 1970s. Now some things do cross over, like the analytical concepts or the ways that we have traditional openings, they're still kind of the same. So in some sense, the first 50 15 moves of a game are kind of well known and well understood throughout the history and to modern day. But it's the long game that really seems to be changing thanks to artificial intelligence. Now some people are of the opinion that it's taken away some of the creativity, some of the challenge, and it's made it more mechanical for some humans who want to just play the game at a high level. But on the other hand, others say that because of AI we now have an improved competition. We've gained incredible insights, and because of those insights, it allows players to be more creative. Also, one of the more interesting ways that you can reverse use one of these AI engines is to actually use it to find holes in your game. So instead of trying to win, you actually try to lose in specifically very difficult ways. And by doing this, you can start to learn some kind of a sense of what to do in those rare situations when you're actually at a disadvantage but need to mount a comeback. Which I just find super fascinating. You know, like imagine just being able to have all these edge case scenarios created for you where you're the underdog and figuring out ways to come back. How great would that be for building your confidence over time. So since its inception, artificial intelligence has drastically changed the way that chess is played. But the big takeaway for me is that artificial intelligence is here to stay, and it's slowly working its way into many different aspects of our life. And it's important that we understand just how powerful these tools can be, how creative, how intelligent, how hardworking, and that we start to augment them into our life instead of just fighting back, fighting back, fighting back until finally there's just not a good place for us. I mean, early on, this is the time where we should start using AI properly. We should start understanding it. We should start integrating it into our society in a way where it provides the most benefit for the most people. You know, several openings and different types of strategies that were considered undesirable in the past have been re-energized by AI. In the long game, some of those moves that were considered undesirable actually can put you in positions to win games if you're willing to grind it out and have the kind of foresight that a computer has. I feel like that's also a metaphor. There's so many good ideas in the world that just don't have the luck and the timing to make them come to fruition. With AI, maybe we can start finding extra GDP and extra um, knowledge that we just haven't used before and take it and put it into something that is bigger than the sum of the parts. Maybe that's where we can really innovate and use AI to help us be better people. Hey, I'm trying to say this one guy's name right. It's like Hikaru Nakamura. Can you tell it? Yep. Just Hikaru Nakamura. <laughs> say it again. Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru? Nakamura, yep. Okay, Hikaru Nakamura. That's correct, yep. Okay, all right, thanks man, bye. Hikaru Nakamura. So Lex Freeman interviewed this great chess player, Hikaru Nakamura, and he was asked, do you think chess will ever be 100% completely solved? Do you think chess will ever get solved? So he said he didn't think so, unless maybe there's breakthroughs in quantum computing just because of the exponential explosion of the possibilities. I highly doubt it um, without major advances in quantum computing. And even if it was, then he thought it would become a draw every game. Everything will be a draw for sure. But I found that really interesting too, because Lex sort of pushed back on that and said, well, there's a, an asymmetry, right? Like one player goes first, white starts the game. Would there always be that slight imbalance? What if 
you can constantly as white maintain asymmetry. But maybe if there's a system and it's playing itself and it's got perfect knowledge that, that white will just always win. It will just always be like, no matter how the game plays out, white will always have that slight advantage from the first move and they can just carry it through to the end. But... So thanks for sticking with me and as promised, here is an image that was generated from a prompt that was asking, what does deja vu look like to an artificial intelligent text to image generator? Here you go. So thanks to Taya Pawa for putting that comment. If you guys wanna see something in the next video generated, prompt it, anything you want, I'll throw it in the machine. We'll see what it comes up with. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would hit subscribe or make a comment or check out one of our other channels. There's also a Be Curious podcast and a Be Curious reaction channel. I would love to see you over there too. And until next time.